ओम श्री साई राम गीता वाहिनी चैप्टर ट्वेंटी कृष्णा इज द इम्पार्शियल विटनेस गॉड इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑल इज ऑल कृष्णा गिव्स अर्जुना ए विजन ऑफ गॉड अर्जुना आस्क वेदर वर्शिप ऑफ द फॉर्म और फॉर्मलेस इज मोर प्लीजिंग टू गॉड The Gita clearly declares that only the heart lotus that is free from impurities that grows in the pellucid waters of the mind is worthy to be offered to God that is why Krishna told Arjuna my dear brother in law whatever activity you are engaged in whatever gift you give whatever food you take do it as a dedicated offering to me do everything in the dedicatory spirit as a tribute to god for only such acts reach me i have no special preference for any one name all names are mine i know neither friend nor foe i am the unaffected witness i reside with all who serve me and derive joy from that service this raised some doubts in arjuna's mind he asked krishna you say that you don't make any distinction that you have neither friend nor foe why then are some happy and other and others unhappy some strong in body and mind and others weak and sickly some poor and others rich what is the reason behind all this when you yourself are above any distinctions of such type why can't you keep all in the same condition observing facts as they are it is difficult to believe that you look upon all without any partiality krishna laughed at this doubt that worried arjuna I give expression only to truth. I don't adjust my speech to your approval or disapproval. I am not elated when you approve or depressed when you disapprove. I am the same in all, but all are not the same in me. You have observed that during the cold months, villagers sit around a fire at night. but only those who sit near the fire get refreshed by the warmth those squatting far away have also put up with the darkness if people stay afar and complain that they don't receive warmth and that they have to suffer darkness can you ascribe it to the partiality of fire it is meaningless to argue from this that fire treats different people differently the splendor of divine vision is akin to this if you seek to earn it you have to approach it and stay there everyone has equal right to do so and to feel the fire so that it might illumine and warm even more fire is impartial in deriving its benefit and in making it grow into greater and greater capacity there are differences i am splendor i have no partiality at all all have equal chance opportunity and authority to experience me and derive bliss from me distinctions and differences arise as a result of the faults of the spiritual aspirants they are not blemishes in me Did you notice the loving words of Krishna the shower of his grace how true his words are really people don't understand the faults in themselves they seek faults in others if the lord had faults how could the world exist or survive the lord sees all as equal his art embraces all in love that is why the world has at least this much peace and prosperity doctor may declare that the patient has no fever just to console the sick one but the thermometer cannot lie 
God knows and reacts to the inner feeling, not to appearance. He can never go wrong, nor can he be deceived. The world considers only the outward appearance. It is guided only by that. Weighed in the river, only then can you know the depth of the river. Eat if you must know the taste. When people pronounce judgment on the depth or the taste without wading or tasting, how can their declarations be taken as true? If the Lord has, he, Lord Himself was affected by partiality, how could He award the bliss of spiritual union to the cowards of maids of Brindavan? Would He have partaken of fruits partly eaten by Savari? Could Janaka have become a knower of Brahman, Brahmajnani? Could Nandanar have achieved the grand vision of the Lord? Could Prahalada and Vibhishana have approached the Lord? Could Hanuman have been accepted as the messenger of Rama? Could Valmiki have written the great epic, the Ramayana? Do these indicate any partiality in the composition of the Lord? Or... Do they prove that he has no such trait? These are examples of the Lord's law. His uniform kindness to all. The Lord has commanded, Keep your mind steadily on me. Be devoted sincerely to me. Prostrate before me, offering all your thoughts, words and deeds to me. Love me steady fastly. Mano, manmanabhava, mad bhakta, madhyaji, Maam Namaskaro. With these words, he has indicated that what he desires most in you or a pure mind and untarnished law. When immersed in humanness, Manava Tattva, you cannot attain Godness. Madhava Tattva, you have to attain Godness to get Godhood. To see darkness, you must have only darkness. To see light, you should have light. To understand intelligence, you have to be intelligent. If you are constantly act, active about human things, how can you realize the glory of divinity? To become divine, you have to dwell in the memory of the divine. Act divinely, behave divinely. The state, the environment and the feeling all must be coordinated for that one purpose, only then can the principle be grasped. It is on the basis of this truth that Krishna continued thus, Arjuna, spiritually wise ones, jnanis are superior even to the gods, who in turn are superior to people, but these wise ones are also unable to grasp the full import, import of God. How then? Can ordinary people like you ever understand it? At this sly dig, Arjuna bent his head in shame. He said, Yes, I agree, Krishna. You are behind the grasp of anyone. However intelligent one may be, you are of endless manifest manifoldness. I am convinced you are the universal absolute. I know, I believe that you created the entire universe and that you are fostering it, presiding over both the evolution and the involution of the worlds, that you are the master of creation, preservation and destruction or merging, srishti, sthiti, laya. You have told me this yourself. I am ever grateful for this and I am happy that I was considered worthy. But how, in what forms, are you immanent in the universe that you brought into being? I long to hear it from you and make myself worthier to be alive, said Arjuna. And which among these various forms am I to meditate upon? Tell me, so that I can meditate likewise and save myself, he pleaded. A pretty small question that said Krishna with a smile. Perhaps you felt that you can easily understand the answer if given right. Since the question has been put, I shall melt a little and give the answer. 
listen carefully i am the inner atma in the lotus heart of each and every being so if you believe and direct your life on the basis of the belief that the inner atma in every being is my highest atma paramatma that is enough meditation for you see that this belief is not shaken or overthrown stick to it steadily practice it apply it in your thoughts words and deeds then the experience of oneness of your being me and i being you can be achieved the five elements earth water fire wind and sky are also my forms i am the activity in the sun moon and stars when the great destruction comes i am the force of destruction and i am the force that constructs again i am everything from the microscopic to the macroscopic i am the past present and future i am the three regions and the three characteristics gunas that have shaped people and nature there is no object that is not i no name that is not mine blood taken from any part of the body is the same as from any other part so to the divine is everywhere the same then arjuna joined both his forms and with uplifted hands asked krishna the whole of creation is yours form isn't it knowledge wealth power strength energy splendor all these are expressions of your glory are not they well won't you give me the sacred chance to fulfill my life's desire to experience you as all this creation as the form of creation itself vishwarupa i plead with you i pray at your feet knowing the anguish of his heart krishna replied arjuna i shall certainly satisfy you but your physical eyes cannot see that glory the form of creation cannot be pursued by the limited vision which sees and grasps only this nature therefore i shall confer on you the supernatural eye now see he said and manifested himself before him the creation and more what great mercy what superb experience why let this point there is one subtle detail that seekers have to note the vedas the scriptures and epics as well as many scholars and saints and others we have a right to speak about such matters all describe god as present everywhere and as the inner reality in every being on the basis of this some people argue if he is so present everywhere and in everything why is he not seen by everyone for all such the reply is how can the physical eye composed of the five elements see behind the five nothing can illumine an object that does not reflect light but a flame illumines itself and sheds light all around god is self luminous he illumines all he is behind nature which is but a manifestation of his glory so he can be seen only by the eye of wisdom and i that can be won only by his grace hence worship of god is an essential part of spiritual discipline he who fails in seeing himself can never succeed in seeing others in seeing anything outside him engage yourself in spiritual discipline that will secure the grace of god through that grace the eye of spiritual wisdom jnana netra will be granted he is easily reachable by the path of devotion while experiencing the vision of god in the universe and god as the universe arjuna was shedding tears of joy ho almighty god all the gods brahma the creator all the sages and saints all the manifold beings and objects movable and immovable ho oh, i see every one of these i see all ho oh, from your a inspiring face flames of splendor emerge and spread to farthest distances how i wish 
i could know the meaning and purport of this formidable form arjuna exclaimed exclaimed did you see arjuna have you known by this that i am the creator sustainer and destroyer of all activity and all beings and objects have you realized that you cannot save anyone on this battlefield nor can you kill anyone you have no power to kill nor have they the power to die by their own efforts living and dying are both directed by my will i bear the burden of the earth i create the burden i relieve it said krishna fondly patting arjuna on the back and speaking softly to assuage his ecstatic excitement this incident is a fine example to illustrate how god is bound by sincerity of devotion and how he bends to console and encourages devotees just imagine how could this arjuna who was so hesitating and nervous until he got ocular demonstration like an ordinary mortal face and conquer mighty heroes and masters of all arts like bhishma drona and karna they were conquered by his will arjuna wiped his the tears from his eyes and folded his hands in prayer oh lord i see the form of creation vishwarupa which i had never before seen or heard about or even conceived i realize that it is a factual truth those terrific flames of splendor are scorching me my body is sizzling under the impact of the glory present yourself before me once again with a sweet smiling form of yours i can no longer bear this vision father resume your form i cannot continue to look upon this pleaded arjuna his grace made him agree he said arjuna you have just seen this universal universe full form of mine a vision that no height of vedic scholarship or ritual ecstasyism or austerity can ever hope to win this is achieved only by devotees whose devotion does not admit of the least distraction such devotees see only the lord whatever they do they do as worship to the lord they have no other form before their eyes no other thought in their minds no other act for their hands all at all times and places they see only my form they utter only my name they think only about me they feel only for me or about me they are active only for my sake it is such o arjuna that attain this vision i to ask for only this devotion that does not admit of the least distinction arjuna asked with a smile and a little tremor of the lips o lord i realize that you are pleased with undeviated single pointed devotion but are you pleased with contemplation of you with form sa akara upasana or you without form nirakara upasana which melts you more and cont- contributes to success in getting your blessings which is easier for the spiritual aspirant and more welcomed by you please tell me krishna was happy that this question was asked he said arjuna i don't make any distinction between the two i am pleased however i am worshiped provided the mind is saturated with me and there is steady faith in every act word and thought arjuna intercepted with the query krishna or mere purity of heart and steady faith enough do not sex or status as fixed by caste or the stage of the life form obstacles to success krishna chided arjuna and replied i am surprised that you should ask us questions after going through all this experience don't you realize that for those who have fixed their minds on god who have reposed in me the personification of truth eternal and pure there will not be an iota of false identification of the self with the body if they still have awareness of sex or caste or stage of life with all that attendant pride humility etc 
it only reveals that they have not surrendered their minds to god for those who have rid themselves of attachment to the body there will not be in the distraction of caste status etc but the codes of moral conduct prescribed for those in the four stages of life student householder reclass monk and the codes of moral conduct for the caste do not hinder in any way the discipline of fixing the mind on god or of purifying the mind of evil or worshiping the lord through all one's actions words and thoughts the distinctions of sex or caste or status or stage of life affect only those who live in the awareness of the body as reality and who act as if the world is absolute and eternal at this stage arjuna said krishna the contemplation contemplation of the formless characteristicless nirguna nirakara is very difficult for those who identify the self with the body isn't it the worship of the formful aspect of god which is within the reach of the ordinary people can it yield purity of mind purity of the inner instruments of consciousness please enlighten me jai sai ram